Hey you guys, um, making another video for you now. I'm about to go away camping in the Lake District for a couple of days, so you're not going to get any videos from me, um, maybe Friday morning, but uh, not for a couple of days. So I'm lining up another one for you. Now this is a message sent in by PXM23, who's a Chess Bootcamp Live member. Uh, he said this this game wasn't particularly interesting. I disagree. I think it's really interesting. And he sent it to me because it's in the Russo Gambit. Um, and I've just made a video that features a Russo Gambit. And this kind of leads on very well from that. So I thought, let's do this because there's a really, really fascinating line that has got some lovely tricks and traps in it. Okay. I've only just kind of delved into this, but I think it's very interesting and it kind of answers a question from my previous video. So, this is not a long game. Okay, so, uh, we have e4, e5, normal King's Knight opening, and an Italian game, okay? So with the Italian, then f5 here, with Mad Freddy, is the Russo Gambit. If your opponent plays the Spanish, then with Bishop to b5, then the same move is different. It's the Schlechter defense, used to be called the Janish Gambit. Now, so, Pete plays f5, and um, what you're really hoping for is, is takes, just like with the Vienna, right? So the opposite of the Vienna with an extra bishop out on the board, right? But the opponent here, rated 1088, plays the best move, the best engine move from white, which is d3. Okay, now you don't want to take here and start initiating trouble. So, in my previous video, um, I was asking the question, well, what do you play from, from here? Because I know that in my notes, in my Leech study, which I'll link to, um, I say bishop c5. And the reason is because it it's, feels good and it scores well. So it's like 51% or something for black from this position. Um, the computer, you know, it actually d3 scores a, bit, a little bit better even than that. Um, the computer likes knight f6, but in real life it doesn't work out so well. So, um, in my study, we've been looking at, at maybe this, or maybe d6. Is d6 better? However, check out this game. Because in this game, PXM plays uh, bishop c5, looking down at f7, okay? And this is what I remarked is kind of similar to the Traxler, is it the Traxler counterattack? Um, where you invite a fried liver style attack with both bishop and knight looking at f7, and lo and behold, that is exactly what we get. Now, um, but with the Traxler, actually, we have this, don't we, and and this, but not that. So it's not it's not similar. So the same kind of ideas are not going to transpose. But it's very different, and this, this definitely merits looking at because a lot of players are going to go for this kind of fried liver style attack against f7. So, what, do, what does black play here? Black just ignores the threat and pushes ahead with f4. Oh my goodness! Right, now, at this point, white has two very appealing ideas. One is bishop in with check which is not great for white, right? It forces the king to move. Um, and the other is knight f7, which does not come with check, but does fork the queen and the rook. And this is actually better for white. In the game, white plays bishop f7 check, which is uh, not great. We have king f8. Bishop now takes the knight, right? But notice that the knight is hanging, so queen takes knight, okay? And look at this now, right? Yeah, black's king has been forced to move, but what's attacking it? Nothing, right? White's got one piece out on the board, it's on the back rank, about to get gobbled up by competitors. So here, white actually castles and loses his bishop. So white is now down a full piece. Go figure. And in a few moves, it's all over. We have knight c3. We have d6 now re releasing this bishop, and the finish is rather lovely. Knight comes in with a half-assed attack towards this rook. Black is unconcerned. 
develops the bishop with tempo, hitting the queen. Queen moves. Knight in now to d4. Okay. And queen comes back out. And now we actually have a... Um, there's, a there's a royal fork if you want it. King and queen. Completely undefended. But we instead of that, we have bishop to f3. Okay. And which basically is threatening mate in one. So now g3 is forced. And this is a lovely finish. Really nice finish from pxm23. And the final move, knight to e2 now, not only hits the queen, but delivers mate. Because the bishop is covering these two squares. The king is in check. He's got nowhere to go. And that, guys, is quite beautiful. Now, we're going to flip over to the Lee Chess study. Okay. So this is my um, my study on the Russo, and we've got different chapters. We've got chapter for accepted. We've got chapter for two D three, um, and we and then D four uh, and knight C three in castles. Okay, so this is the D three chapter. So we go da 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 as we saw in the game, F five now, and oh no, this is not. We're going for D three. Okay, um, I think it's just a bit slow to load up. Okay, so now d3. Okay, here we go. Now, d6, I've just added this after my previous game. d6 is the best scoring move for black, but we're going to ignore that. And we're going to go down to this with bishop c5 again, right? And this is known as the Lucchini Gambit. Right, and you'll see it's similar to the kind of King's Gambit declined. And this does quite well. And you can see here in the from the database that Castles is probably you know the, the best approach for white. But the most common move is actually knight g5, a little bit more common than castles, and that's not great, and ne neither is e takes the uh, f5. So let's look at these, okay? So knight g5, you're gonna get this a lot at lower levels. They're gonna go in for the fried liver style attack. And what we do is the incredible f4, okay? It's exactly what we just saw in the game, f4. Now, bishop here is a mistake, right? You can see the eval has now just shot up to minus 2.6, okay? We have king there. And if bishop takes again, that's another mistake because we grab the, the knight and you know we've seen how this ends. Okay, so now knight takes is much better, but still bizarrely, even though the queen and the rook are forked here, bizarrely, um, we are still the the computer still actually has black as equal right now, partly because there's no you know very little development. It's got two pieces out but uh, let's see how it goes so um, okay I'm gonna go back okay so so with with this and knight in okay we'll, we'll just go on from here the um, the move here is Queen to h4 okay and it's still zero 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 now if your opponent gets greedy and grabs that, it's the end of the game, GG, shake hands, off you go, fill in your sheet and go home, because it's checkmate from the queen and the bishop on f2. So that isn't a very good idea, okay? But even, look, I mean, just look at this, this is 77, and we're not talking a handful of games, we're talking 695 games from this position. This Lucchini Gambit, guys, is a sharp one. Watch out, or you'll cut yourself with this one, okay? The most common move that you will see here is castles. But this ain't good. Why is it not good? Well, we go in with a knight, right? And the most common move here, by a country mile, knight takes h8, and we go from minus two to <coughs> You go down, you are going down. Why? Because knight g4, right? The threatening mate here. Okay, so, What's uh, white going to do? White is going to push the h-pawn. 
Okay, pushing pushing the, the G pawn doesn't work because it's still made. Okay, so H pawn is pretty much forced. Then Knight takes F2 and check it out. The rook can't capture because Queen just takes and you go down the exchange as well. Okay, if Rook takes, boom, you're dead. Okay, King moves out of the way, Pawn comes in now and the Queen has to take the Pawn and then look at that checkmate, right? Glorious, glorious. So that's with castles, okay? Castles from this position, the most common move. What about Queen F3? Queen F3 seems to kind of tie everything together. But again, look, minus five now. Why Queen F3? Well, let's look at it. Let's fill this in as we go. Again, um, so here is Knight D4. Knight D4, the beautiful knight move, hits the queen and hits C2 with the threat of a, a fork on the rook with check. Okay, what are you going to get here? You're going to get Queen H3 or Queen D1. Okay, neither is very appealing. Queen H3, let's see what happens. Let's learn together. Queen H3, then knight takes C2 and it's all going Pete Tong. Right, and it's it, this is just basically losing. You know, you can figure this out from here. King d1 is likely to be played, and if king d1, we can just enjoy seeing how people have completely screwed up other people in the past. Queen takes f2, defends the knight. The bishop's going to come flying in. This is just absolutely horrible. Um, knight takes h8. At this point, is the most common move. And what do we do if this happens? We simply push d5. Hang on. How do we push d5? That's the d... Oh, yeah. Wow. Pawn to d5. Really? Hitting the bishop? Or knight f6 wins. Okay. White now tries queen h5 check. We are unconcerned. What, are we going to play g6 now? Yeah, we're going to play g6. Or even king d8. Either way, it's just all winning. It's just all winning. Let's do king d8. Okay. And... Oh, no, that's a blunder. That's terrible. Now white's winning. No, we don't want to do that, do we? We do not want to do that. Okay, no. You can see here, king d8 is better for white. No, we have to push g6. Okay. So you can see, this, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to promote this variation. Um, king d8 we can delete. We're not interested in that. And... Queen takes here with check, but it's just really all just prolonging the inevitable here, right? King goes to e. What? No, knight e seven blocks. Okay. Anyway, so whew, wow, interesting stuff. So let's just let's go go over it again to that point. Okay, bishop here, there, and then we have d three. And what are we doing from here? We're not doing that, okay? We're going to put bishop to here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to promote bishop d6 now to be my, like my, sorry, bishop c5 to be my default. So I'm going to promote that variation, okay? And then force variation again. So we've got two options. If the knight comes in with the fried liver style, we know what we do. We push f4, which is not only the engine move, but also the most winning as well. So the bishop here is poor. We know that. If knight comes in, we know to play queen out to there. Okay. And the computer actually right now... Okay, it's just gone from plus one in white's favor to dead drawn. All right. You will probably get a lot of this. How many, how many knight takes h8? 22 people have just grabbed the rook and fallen to an instant mate. 22 been played 22 times and obviously everybody completely fails from there. So we've looked at castles, not good. Looked at queen f3, not good. Looked at g3, not good. Queen e2, it's worth a quick look. Let's have a, look, a quick look at queen e2. Okay. Queen e2 also looks like a blunder for the same reason. Okay. We've got knight d4 coming in. Um, really doesn't matter what we do here. But black is black is just better. So tell you what, I'm going to try and remember this. I'm going to try and work this into into my my mind and into my games going forward. Because 
I think I'm going to enjoy myself a little bit with this one. So there you go, a bit more about the Lucchini Gambit, which comes on from the Russo Gambit. Um, hope you're enjoying this series on my Freddy Krueger style repertoire with crazy F-porn moves. I'm certainly enjoying myself. Well, look, the computer's just figured out actually Black is winning from this point in time. Good stuff. All right, guys, so hope you all have a great weekend, and I'll see you on the other side. Take care. Bye-bye.